Welcome to Peppers Glowworms. So, I have already made a few videos about how I first met my Sardinian glowworms back in 2004 and how one single male is the sire of my entire colony, but there's one thing that I didn't really realize until I prepared my Halloween special last year and that is that although I collected nine larvae and as I mentioned only one of them turned out to be a male, uh, I also only kept the eggs from one single female. Although the male mate the three, I only kept the eggs from the female that was from a different location than the male. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at the samples that I have from those nine original ones. Uh, the female that I kept the X from was individual number four. Here we have some samples. Uh, larval skin, pupil skin, and there is the remains of the female number four. It was already a bit discolored when I preserved it in alcohol. It had probably died a day before I preserved it and this one laid a clutch of eggs and uh, those are the was the start of the colony that I have now in 2024 20 years later happy Bob Day Bob Day meaning birth of brood August 21st because on the day that this video goes public, 20 years have passed since the first captive bred larvae of Lampyrus sardinie hatched for me. Well, uh, those with the parents from different localities, that is. The offspring of the females from the same locality as the male hatched a few days earlier. But I didn't keep those. That means that all those Sardinian glowworms that I have now currently generations 27 and 26, are descended from one single breeding pair. You would expect some issues due to inbreeding, no? However, the only thing that seems to have changed in recent years is that less offspring appear to be produced. Now, in and of itself, that is not a problem. It actually keeps the population size below a level where I can comfortably take care of them. Unlike with the eerie silk moths, where I was really tempted to breed unreasonably large quantities. I am now closely monitoring the number of eggs and larvae per female and arrange matings purposefully. Although in the F1 generation they were probably quite heterozygous, what with the parents being from different localities, uh, I can hardly imagine there being much genetic diversity left anymore. Hopefully the good genes have already prevailed. Anyway, I will nonetheless favor larvae from intermediate to large broods. That means at least 40 hatched larvae. That's the limit. Clutch 13 of generation 26 even had a hundred of those and about 20 still unhatched eggs when I counted. That is within the ballpark of that very first F1 clutch. So, in conclusion, I think I have fine-tuned my methods for keeping and breeding glowworms sufficiently enough to justify some updated care guide videos. Those will be among upcoming uploads. But for now, happy Bob Day! Happy Bob Day to me and the glowworms. <laughs>